Hello, welcome back. This is another video in the series about ClearPass SQL. In this series, we will be connecting ClearPass to an external SQL database and we will be using uh, both MySQL and Postgres databases, which are two uh, very nice free database systems that are deployed at a large scale on the internet and in enterprises. And what we have done in an earlier uh, episode, so uh, check that one if you are not familiar in setting up MySQL, is we set it up the MySQL database on Ubuntu Linux. And um, what we did create was uh, a database CP demo with two tables. In the first table, I had uh, some user information. So I had a user, test user with the password uh, Aruba123, and I put it in. The password as MD5, SHA and SHA256 uh, versions as well. And the second database is a device database that we can do uh, to authorize devices on the network. So we have the MAC address, a name, location uh, and some other values in that database. So in this episode, we will be uh, configuring the ClearPass or going through the ClearPass configuration. So this is my ClearPass server here. And in order to uh, make this happen, we start by going to the configuration and to the authentication sources. So I already put it in. So I have an authentication source for the uh, device and for the user. And let's start with the user authentication. So we see this user authentication. We go here with the, uh, uh, the uh, generic uh, information on the database. So we named it MySQL minus user, um, which is the user database and here on primary we set the values uh, required to connect from the clear pass to the um, database so i put the database on this ip address here uh, and i need to log in with the uh, username cp demo uh, uh, no the database cp demo I need to log in with the user clear pass and the password is aruba123 so here we select the database type so in this case um because it's MySQL, we uh, clicked here on the MySQL uh, driver. So one thing, if you can't find this, um, you need to install the MySQL driver uh, separately. That's because of licensing issue. Uh, you need to download it from the support website under tools. There is the MySQL driver, which you can uh, upload to ClearPass. And uh, I will create another video on that specific topic and I will link it uh, about here in the video so you can click on it and see how you the uh, how you install the driver on uh, on ClearPass. Then here we uh, configure how the passwords are stored in the database. So as you might have seen uh, in the database we had similar uh, or different versions of the password. So uh, we start with the ClearPass password and let's try with the uh, SHA-256 uh, later on, for example. And then uh, the most important part is uh, our SQL query. And the SQL query here is um, configured as a so-called filter. And that filter, let's see how that's uh, configured. Um, it has a filter name. Here it has the uh, SQL query. So the SQL query is select the CP username. So that's in uh, the database uh, one field. Uh, and we bring that as username to clear pass uh, the CP password uh, from uh, the database. Uh, the first name, the last name, the email from the CP user table. And uh, we do a filter where the CP username equals the authentication uh, username. So where do you get that uh, uh, that that token from? From it's uh, it's it's very simple. So if you go to uh, the ClearPass access tracker, um, you can here uh, see that here in the radius you crest you have all kinds of data. So you have all the data available, and um, here on uh, the authentication username, um, I think we took this. No, we took this one. Um, so that's uh, the value that's filtered on. And what I do typically is I uh, copy it from here. Then I press Ctrl C and uh, I go here to my filter and I do a percent curly brace open, then paste it and uh, curly brace uh, close. So there's some annoying stuff in uh, line. And don't forget to um, finish the line with that uh, semicolon. 
Um, then here we select uh, which fields will be available as attributes in the clear pass. So pretty simple. I will put the SQL query in the command so you can copy and paste it if you want to uh, do this in your own environment. So what I next created is a service and I have a, a very simple service which is called uh, test SQL and um, I use a um, policy simulation later on to test it so you can uh, easily modify this for a real production version but I have an uh, policy simulation where I set the uh, NAS IP address to 1234 and I check that here in my service matching rules so then in uh, the service I put the authentication on uh, PAP and I put the authentication sources on my uh, MySQL user database so the one that I just uh, created I don't do any role mapping and the enforcement here is if it's authenticated then I have an uh, allow access profile so the service is set up as well and now we can go to this policy simulation where we can do that uh, test so in this test uh, here I put the NAS IP address to 1234 so it will match the service uh, it's a generic uh, test with uh, PAP authentication the username is set here and the password here is uh, set to uh, let's uh, put it on uh, ABC one two three so then it's uh, uh, then it's incorrect um, then here and the result it's running and um, it's expected to fail now we can see indeed authentication has failed we can see in the uh, access tracker as well so here uh, the clear te pass tech, uh, the clear text password check failed so now let's uh, change the password to a correct one aruba one two three and uh, again and now we can see the authentication was successful again we can see the details here in the access tracker and you can see indeed that the author of uh, authentication source was uh, the SQL database and it was uh, the authorization source was uh, the MySQL user database we see uh, an allow access profile and here under input um, what is uh, nice is that we can see here the uh, test first first name and the test last uh, last name so we can get additional fields from that database so pretty simple and uh, pretty effective and you can change of course the query to match your own database setup uh, but in the other video uh, we set up uh, exactly this database so you can cut and paste and then it will work and you can uh, run it from that uh, place on so let's um, change the password uh, the password method so let's go back here to our uh, MySQL database because in many databases we don't have the password available as a clear text password because if you have access to the database you can fetch the passwords and uh, that's probably a bad thing so we can use here uh, an hash function so it will be a hash of the password and we can compare the hashes ClearPass will fetch the hashed password from the database then compare it to a hash of the password that the user gave and uh, then it will compare and if it's uh, the same then it will be uh, it will be uh, an successful authentication so what we should do here is instead of the uh, um, the CP password we will use the uh, let's see how we call that um, we call that uh, table so we will use the uh, CP password underscore SHA-256 SHA-256 and we save it so uh, we picked here another uh, column in the in, in the table which has the SHA-256 version of the uh, password and here under primary we selected that the password type should be SHA-256 so let's save it and uh, run that policy simulation again and let's see um, so the password should be cached and we can see here that the uh, radius of indication is uh, again successful so that's um, that's how it's done with a, a SHA-256 uh, password 
So we can do similar things with uh, devices. So uh, we had that uh, separate uh, table with the device, CP device. So we can uh, match, uh, for example, the production status from the SQL database uh, and fetch that from that uh, MySQL. And uh, let's see how that's done. So for that, we also uh, create a authentication source. So here it's the MySQL device, which is uh, pretty similar. So also here we have the MySQL uh, driver, the password type. In this case, doesn't uh, really matter because we're not authenticating. We're just uh, taking authorization attributes. And then here under attributes, uh, we have again um, the filter query where we are uh, getting the uh, MAC address, the name, the location, the label, the color, the status from the CP device and then uh, where the MAC address equals um, connection client MAC address no delimiter. And again, if you uh, cannot make that up yourself, um, it's uh, just here. So um, we take the no delim version. So this one, um, because this uh, this way uh, of the MAC address exactly matches uh, the way it's stored in the database. Um, if it's stored in the database with this dot format, you will take uh, this one. If it's stored with hyphens, you take uh, this one. So um, you can, uh, in many cases, do a direct match on that uh, database. And um, again, these columns are the ones that are configured in the database. So to make this uh, functional, I have this uh, service available, which is an uh, existing Mac authentication uh, service uh, where I enabled here the authorization, which reveals here the authorization tab. So we see in the authentication, we just have the uh, endpoint database. In the authorization, I uh, added here the MySQL device uh, database. And I do have a small role mapping here, which checks if the the status in the MySQL database, if it's filled with the value production, I will give the user a production role on the network so we can easily um, make, uh, yeah, g give good um, the proper uh, access to the network. So let's check here in uh, the access tracker and let me turn around and um, do an trigger authentication for this uh, specific camera. So the authentication um, should be in any moment. So there it is. Um, so um, here we see the authentic authentication coming in. Um, we do see that the production role uh, was, uh, was assigned. We do see that the authorization source, uh, MySQL device uh, was used as well. And here under the authorization attributes, what we now can see is that the MySQL device, so all the fields that we had for the um, in the in the database are all stored here now, um, and we used the production status. Uh, yeah, we used that one in uh, in the uh, policy to uh, give this uh, device a production role on the network. So you can see uh, the data in here is uh, the same data that was here in the database. So that's it for MySQL. I will create another video uh, with the same content to do it with Postgres database, which is very uh, similar. So I hope this uh, was useful for you to uh, get SQL databases uh, connections running in your lab or um, in customer environments. Uh, hope you join, enjoyed it. Uh, please uh, like this video and subscribe to our channel. And uh, thank you again for watching.